When the temperatures drop, a lot of people will hang up their hiking boots and call it good for the season and wait for spring. But that doesn't have to be the case because winter is often some of my favorite times to get out for backpacking and camping. If winter backpacking and camping is something that you're interested in trying, I'm gonna help you with some tips on proper gear, proper techniques, and some things that you can do to make your time more fun and more safe. One of the first principles I like to talk about is layering and moisture management. With layering, it's all about maintaining a stable core temperature, not getting too hot, not getting too cold. An overlooked thing with winter camping is making sure that you don't get sweaty. So I wanna talk about what I use to layer. One of the first layers that I will start with is simply just a synthetic t-shirt. Sometimes I go for a long sleeve one, something that I will wear throughout my whole trip, kind of no matter what. I do like to start with like a synthetic or quick drying base layer or t-shirt, and then I go for a hoodie. Something I've talked here on the past quite a few times is this alpaca wool hoodie. And it's just one of my favorites, but certainly doesn't have to be a fancy alpaca wool hoodie. It can be regular wool or it can just be a synthetic layer. Something that you can wear that you can hike in if you're moving and creating a lot of aerobic activity that can breathe, where moisture that you create, your sweat, can escape. This is one of my favorites. So this is like the next layer in my system. So for my layering system on top of my fleece, I have now a synthetic layer that is kind of like a puffy, but is something that I can maybe do some more aerobic activity, AKA hiking in, and something that I won't get too sweaty in, but is just a nice extra layer. When it's really cold, and when I say really cold, I mean something like it's going to be getting down around zero degrees Fahrenheit, or well below freezing, and you need to be able to have quite a few options for keeping warm in case things really can go awry. So I'll wear a layer like this, and then I'll also wear another puffy on top of this. I've got my base layer, my wool fleece here. I've got this synthetic jacket here. Now I have my big down jacket. This is going to be really good in a lot of situations if the temperature is really getting cold. One of the things that I think is most important is having a hard shell, either for on my legs, like rain pants or snow pants, and a hard shell, like a rain jacket, that won't let that wind really just blow through and rob me of my heat. Wind is by far one of the most challenging conditions when it comes to winter backpacking. I am currently in about 28 degrees of temperature, but the wind chill is down to about zero. It is brutally cold out here. Making sure that you are covered up. So right now, my face is exposed, my head is kind of exposed, and I'm losing a lot of my heat. And then another point is right around at my wrists. I wanna make sure that my jacket is covering that gap. And same thing goes for my neck, my wrists, and my ankles. Whew. Having a hard time talking. Whew. Protect yourself against windy conditions with proper layering. That's gonna look like making sure that you have a beanie having your head covered. I'd probably wanna be actually wearing a balaclava right now, something that covers more of my face and my neck. And uh, as soon as I can, I'm gonna put my hood up and really cover this up and make sure that I'm not losing as much of that uh, heat as I can. One of the main mistakes I see people making is actually just wearing too many layers and then they go for a hike, put on their backpack and start hiking and they just start sweating all through their layers. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna trap your sweat and your moisture in these layers. And then when the temperature really drops, you're gonna be cold and in trouble. One of my favorite pieces of winter gear that is often overlooked is my gaiters. Obviously one of the most important things is you just wanna keep your feet dry and gaiters are an incredibly helpful tool for that, especially if you're hiking and trudging around in some deep snow. I tend to lose a surprising amount of heat around the ankles of my pants. It's almost like wearing another layer and it just really helps keep me warm. My current favorite pair is from a company called Hillsound. It's a small company. I've used a bunch and this is just my go-to choice. I love that they zip from the top down. I'm just a big fan of them and they're not terribly expensive and they just work. If you're new to gaiters, I like to wear them over my hiking pants, but under my hard shell. That way I can take on and off my hard shell pants as needed without having to hassle with my gaiters. So sometimes, on winter campouts, my gaiters just stay on from morning until I'm going to bed. Let's talk about the gear you need to get good sleep. So do you need a zero or a negative 20 degree sleeping bag in order to be comfortable out winter camping? 
Well, the short answer is no. There's actually some things that you can do to make your existing sleeping bag go further, take you deeper into winter, and keep you safe and comfortable in colder temperatures. One thing I would say is that if you are planning on spending more than five to 10 nights a year consistently out winter camping, then I do recommend getting a good quality zero or negative 20 degree sleeping bag, depending on where you're planning on really going. This is my zero degree Thermarest bag, zero degree Fahrenheit. And this is really a great bag for a lot of conditions. And for most cold weather camping, this is plenty for me. Now, if I'm gonna do something really extreme or really up in the Arctic, then yeah, I'm gonna need something that's going to be more protection than zero degrees. Now, I'm not the first person to point this out, but something that a lot of people overlook when they think about the ratings of their sleeping bag is that you have to be combining that with a quality air mattress. Right now, I've got this. This is from Zenbivi. This is a 5R value backpacking mattress, and this is going to keep me much warmer and much more comfortable than if I had a 3.8 or a 2.9 or something that's really just gonna feel inadequate. This spring, I took a backpacking trip with a zero degree rated sleeping bag, zero degree Fahrenheit rated sleeping bag, but I paired it with a 2.9 R value air mattress. One of my friends was lending me some gear and he gave me a 2.9 R value mattress and I didn't realize it until I got out there and I was sleeping directly on snow. And even though I had a zero degree sleeping bag, I was so cold all night long because all of my heat just went right through the bottom and straight into the snow. And I was not dangerously cold, but I didn't sleep well. It was very, very uncomfortable. And so even though I had the right sleeping bag, I didn't have the right stuff under my sleeping bag that made an actually a huge difference. And if you notice right here, I have an additional mat. And this is for two reasons. I like to have something like this to provide an additional buffer between the ground and my sleeping mattress. This will add about 1.5 to 2 R value to my whole system here. And two, if I do have any leaks or any problems that is unforeseen, any sort of failures in an air mattress, I still have something that will be between me and the snow. And in general, if you're really going into some cold conditions, I think it's a good idea to have one of these fail-safe backups, something that just can't pop, it won't fail. I spent three years as a guide working through some pretty harsh conditions in the winters of Utah. And while I was there, I learned a few things. And one of the biggest factors of my comfort while winter camping was actually my nutrition and my hydration. And this was a concept that I really didn't know anything about. Yes, it's important to have the right gear and invest in some quality stuff that probably is going to be expensive, but there's also just some things that you can do that don't cost any money at all, or at least very little money. And that is to make sure that you are properly staying hydrated, drinking water, and feeding your body calories to burn while the temperatures are really cold. What I've found is that eating foods that have a pretty good amount of fat content are some of the best at making you feel warmer. For me, as a meat eater, is gonna look like things like eating beef jerky, pepperonis, or cheeses. If you are vegan or vegetarian, it's definitely a lot harder for you, but there are some naturally occurring fats and things that you can eat that are also going to help. Things that are less helpful is just sugar. Eating things like dried fruit or just candy is really not going to provide a lot of utility for you. One of the things that I really like to do is before I'm going to sleep at night, I will eat a hot meal and eat something that has some fat content to it, as well as just make sure that I stay drinking. Another mistake that people will make when they're cold camping is that they will go to bed cold. A sleeping bag does not create warmth for you. It only traps the warmth that you create. So if you go into your sleeping bag already freezing cold, well, it might take you a long time to warm up. One of the things that I'll like to do before I get into my bag is just to get moving a little bit. So maybe I do some jumping jacks or maybe I just do a little dance or some squats. Now, of course, I don't wanna get sweaty, but I'll jump into my sleeping bag, maybe do some running mans or kick around a bit or do some planks in my sleeping bag 
anything that I can do to just generate a little bit of warmth so that my sieving bag can do what it's best at, which is keeping the warmth. One of the really interesting mistakes that I see people making that are new to winter backpacking or camping is how they actually situate the sleeping bag. And oftentimes people just don't have any clue how to really cinch up their sleeping bag properly. One of the main things that people do wrong is that they don't properly use the hood or the draft collar. And they simply will just have their head out. Another mistake that I see people make is just fully diving all the way in to the sleeping bag and just being totally engulfed in their sleeping bag. Now the problem with this is that they're breathing out moisture. And when they do that, that moisture gets stuck inside your sleeping bag and it makes your sleeping bag less effective. It's really important to actually have your face out of the sleeping bag and that allows all of that moisture to be breathed out and it doesn't stay in your sleeping bag and it's just a lot warmer. If you actually cinch up your hood around your face, that will go a long way to making sure that all of that heat that you trap in your sleeping bag stays in your sleeping bag. Now, one of the worst things that you can do is not utilize the cinch points or the draft collar, and then all of that heat that your body works so hard to warm up, it's just going to escape out the neck of your sleeping bag and into the night air. This right here is the draft collar, and this is a really important part of winter sleeping bags. And if you've never used a winter bag, then you probably don't even know what it is. This is the part that creates a literal collar that's gonna go around your neck to make sure that as you move around at night, your warm air that's in the sleeping bag doesn't just escape out of your neck and into the tent and into the night air and making your sleeping bag less efficient. Some sleeping bags will even have drawstrings to really bring that close around your neck. But just making sure that you are figuring out that you've got these drawstrings, you can actually cinch your sleeping bag up. The ideal is you just have a space for your mouth to breathe out all of your moisture into the tent. All right, my friends, thanks for watching this one. I hope that you have a great winter season. I'm planning on doing a trip into the San Juans in the winter and really getting out and doing some solo missions. And I think it's gonna be a blast. Uh, if you have any questions about cold weather camping or winter camping, please leave them in the comments below and I'd love to help you get out there and get after it. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Eric Hansen. I'll see you later.